What's up, Print Hustlers? Bruce from Printavo, Simple Shop Management Software. I wanted to continue on giving the summary of the water based camp that SGAA and Tom Davenport and Printed Threads put on this past weekend. So, our next speaker that I really thought was incredible, although he didn't have enough time to truly finish, was Danny Greninger over at Denver Print House. Now, I've heard a lot about Danny as he's basically a, a wizard and really, really good at specialty printing, um, especially in the water-based area. He, he experiments a lot, he tests a lot, does a lot of R&D type work at his shop to really nail down incredible quality water-based prints. Now, Danny's background is actually over in engineering. He was seeing, seeing a lot of parts. Maybe that's where his curiosity came from. And then he started to get into printing at the age of 19. Kind of fast forward through his time of creating Denver Print House and growing it. All of the business is sold now. He does have four autos. He's a general manager still there with 80 heads of embroidery and about 50 employees and team members at the shop currently. Now, the big thing though here is through that huge process, they are now 100% water-based. So every single order that goes through there is water-based that they pump out for their clients. The first thing that Danny talked about was the transition though from Plastisol to water-based. And he did mention that this was a big, big transition. There was a lot of things that happened, not just on actual printing, but in the front office as well. He mentioned that the, uh, first ever really big mistake there was 800 hoodies that were ordered and all the ink washed out of them when the customers were washing them so that was a bit scary and you know he had to deal with that which i'm sure gives everybody nightmares the other thing is that him uh, Beppe at Virus Inc. and Jesse at Matsui, Colin at Ryanette, they all mention that they're very, very open to speak with people. We'll drop names and, and information in the description below. So if you are having issues, these guys are awesome resources to be able to work with. So as Danny thought about his shop, he started to look around in his shop. I mean, things like dust all over the floor, fans blowing from the ceiling, uh, fans blowing on the floor, just was causing a lot of problems when doing a lot of water-based printing, right? The ink was drying a lot quicker. That was the first thing he did was constantly look all over the place. The, the, where ink is mixed, he mentioned that keeping your ink room just like a kitchen and very clean, just all these aspects he had to really look deep into and be able to clean it up to create an environment to to optimize water-based printing. I mean, literally, it's it's almost like a, a it is truly an environment, right? It's like a, a kind of bubble in essence. I mean, even down the humidity, he mentioned, they keep between 40 to 50% as an optimal le level. The art department, they worked with them. Half tones don't show up as well, so they boosted the dot gain about 20% in those mid range when it changes colors and so on with gradients. They stopped using gutters for, for under bases. So those are a couple different changes he mentioned that were big on the art department side. Now in the screen room, he did say that he uses about three different uh, screen meshes for 90% or so of all prints. The first one is a 150 by 48 thin thread that does a lot of the water base and whites that they'll use. And then a 225 by 40, which is more for general colors that they'll also double stroke. And then the 122 by 48, which is more for blocker bases. So they'll use more of like a gray to prime out the shirt color, right? Again, so, you know, especially if they're printing a design on a, uh, you know, uh, black shirt versus a gray shirt versus a red shirt, making sure that the designs look the exact same as close as possible on all the different garment colors, that primer will really help and that's what they use for that. He mentions that he actually gets around about 20,000 impressions on his emulsion before it starts breaking down. Well, he did say that he's gotten up to 50 before, but he says usually expect 20,000 impressions or else you're not quite doing something right with the emulsion. Now, Danny didn't mention the brand of emulsion that he uses, but I'm sure you could reach out to him for questions around that. But he truly cares about the two Ds, durability and detail. Those are the two main aspects that are the real big focus with his emulsion. Now onto the ink room. So again, he really emphasized making this like a food kitchen and making it as clean as possible, not leaving lids off, not having kind of residue along the edges. I mean, even dried up residue that falls into the ink then could 
create problems um, on your prints then too. He emphasized do not rejuvenate the ink with water as well, pouring that in and stirring it up. It is chemically created and it throws off the elements of it. But they do rejuvenate ink with half old ink and then they can mix it with brand new ink, stir it up for a while and then be able to use it again. Later in the talks, Michelle Moxley and MNR talked specifically about that and how they would have these big drums and would pour out old ink, mix in with new ink in these five gallon drums and then bring it out and start using it again. The last part that Danny was getting into was the press setup. So truly being able to make sure your press is always calibrated and it's maintained, it's cleaned, it has tight registrations in the palette setup. He mentioned that you shouldn't be spending more than five minutes or so setting up each screen to making sure that it's in registration, especially with Trilock or if you have direct to screen. Um, again, the real focus is making sure that your equipment is maintained and that is really, really expensive assets that you have in your business. So that completely makes sense. He <clears throat> does take a spray bottle and mixes retardant with a softener into that spray bottle and sprays it onto the screen before putting the ink down, wiping it off, and then puts the ink down. But not putting the ink into, he puts it onto the side and to the back, not onto the actual design there as well. The other thing is that they will constantly have um, uh, cards on the side to always make sure to be pushing and mixing around the ink on the screen and making sure that it's put back into the center of the screen as well. And then the last piece that he was able to touch on before unfortunately is cut off just for timing is that they keep their palettes at about 135 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and they'll use the flash to be able to heat those up and then keep them hot as it acts kind of like a uh, pseudo flash as they're then able to print continually with multiple colors. So Danny is available, usually he's actually, I should I don't know if I should be saying this, but he's usually available on Facebook Messenger to help. He's super responsive, he's super nice, and he's really, really great um, just at this and printing water base at scale especially too. So find him on Facebook and he definitely can answer, or you can ask more questions to him there.